Okay, Larry, it's time for the theme song. Uh, yeah, Bob. What do I do? Hey, everybody, this is Brian Roberts, the director of The Wizard of Haas. Uh, I'm sorry, wait, the, that's The Wonderful Wizard of Haas. The Haas. Wonderful. Don't forget The Wonderful. And this is Phil Vischer, uh, who wrote The Wonderful Wizard of Haas. And hi. That, that Brian directed. Hi, Phil. I'm Chris hi, Wall. Chris. I'm the producer of uh, this particular show. The Wonderful Wizard of Haas. The Wonderful Wizard of Haas. I didn't produce The Wizard of Haas. Uh, but I was asked to produce the wonderful Wizard of Oz. Right, I, really? It was really a better show. I mean, so the, to be I honest, think the working title was Wizard of Oz when you started producing it. Or yes, was it the we Wizard immediately of Oz? changed that. Yeah. The Wizard of the, Oz. Right. Yes. I think this looks familiar. Yeah, there's not much to say about um, the theme song. It has been updated. You know, I don't think I've been on a uh, director's the edit has been commentary updated. for like three or four years. Well, well now that time. the sentence is, oh, you know, the one. Yeah, the restraining order has expired. <laughs> and when you weren't allowed within 20 feet of a microphone? I couldn't come within uh, 50 yards Unless of the tomato. you were tomato. speaking as a vegetable. <laughs> and then you were allowed. A few comments I may have made on the Jonah commentary that <laughs> got me banned. I don't think we're supposed to talk about From that. commentaries. No, and, and I the last show I wrote was uh, The Lord of the Beans. And for some reason, which none of us quite remember because mm. it was so long ago, there was no commentary recorded for that show. And I get emails from fans saying, hey, why didn't you do a commentary yeah. on Lord of yeah. the Beans? And do you know what I have to tell them? I have to. You don't know, well, do you? What I don't do you, know. What do you have to tell them, <laughs> Phil? I have to tell them, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> why there wasn't a comment. I don't remember. I didn't get the memo. Didn't get the memo. But, so then I haven't been on one since then. Do you know why that Did is? Did you see those new shots? Because you haven't worked on them. New shots. I mean, you haven't. Yeah, the montage. It got updated. It's really? Great. It got updated? Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. So even if they don't like the Wizard of Haas... They still got their money's worth because there are new shots in the montage. Shot Actually, the montage. we used that montage on Mo. We just didn't talk about it because it wasn't in the version that we <sighs> well, you know, were watching when we commentated. Look at me. I'm okay, lying. So. I'm lying on the commentary. <laughs> I'm going to be banned again. <laughs> so why haven't you done one since? So because I wrote, okay, I wrote uh, Lord of the Beans in uh, 2004. And right. then I wrote um, this one. What's it called? The Wonderful. The Wonderful Wizard of Haas in 2005. And then it got hung up for like two years. And you know why? It's a little sensitive. We can't really talk about it, but we can kind of talk about it. But there are, when you spoof something that belongs to someone else, sometimes they have an opinion. A small opinion. <laughs> and in fact, both pieces had opinions and, on them. And, 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 and when Lord we, of the Beans, when yes. we did Wizard Lord of, of the Beans, yes. And because in the old days when VeggieTales was tiny, you know, and we would parody Star Trek or something, Nobody cared because nobody <laughs> noticed. But in the new days, you know, when you make movies and, and theme parks and all that stuff, you know, and especially... Then We're making a theme park? If you're on... Oh, yeah. Haven't you heard? <laughs> it's in Dubai. <laughs> That's the only place Buy you can your make a new now, theme park folks. anymore. <laughs> I'll be there. I'll be in Dubai. But look, Larry's got a... Looks like a loaf of bread with a tongue. <laughs> That's the aardvark. I had, you know, when I when I was a little kid, I had wooden toys like these, Phil. Yes. You know, like I, in fact, my parents. We all did, Chris. <laughs> my parents had, I had this plastic one. toys. That explains the splinter scars <laughs> on your hand. That is a pig that we have that, that's still among the living. They last for a while, as long as you don't leave them out in the rain. <laughs> right. Or the let, elements. Let the dog chew them up. Or right. the dog. Yeah. So, uh, Larry's dad got that in Shipshawana. Which is a real place. It's have in, you been there? It's in Indiana. I have not been there, but I've been by there many, many times. If you're on I-80, driving through the north side of to the top of Indiana, on your way, because I would go to Michigan, because that's where my dad's family lives, in Michigan, in rural Michigan. So we always drive back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and you go by, Shipshawana, Shipshawana, Shipshawana. And my, my thought for the first 20 years of my life was, that's a really fun name. But then I found out it's actually an Amish community, and they've got all sorts of craft shows, and people go down there to buy things made from wood, huh. because that's what the Amish that's use to make things. They use wood. Because it's now, do they it's sell tradition? The, do, they, do they sell craft kits like put it together yourself? Because that Larry, I that I Larry don't know. says his dad yeah. spent six weeks putting it together. I, you know what? I kind of extrapolated there <laughs> based on my limited knowledge of Shipshawana <laughs> and craft shows. 
Because they're Amish, they can't actually assemble the things. I extrapolated. But well, they ha they will typically ship them to China for assembly, <laughs> and then they come back, and then the Amish sell them. I see. But do they can, have to go by carriage to China? You can see. <laughs> Horse and they buggy. go by carriage to Los Angeles, oh. <laughs> and then they get on a boat. <laughs> but they have union guys do that part. Yeah, they yeah. Don't right. Okay, so we're so on the here's farm here, the farm, oh, the o Gills farm. Dental Floss Farm. Yeah, and as I may have revealed uh, previously, I did not come up with the idea for a dental floss farm myself. Oh, I heard tell? about it in my childhood when I was I don't know I was probably in late junior high. Um, when a, a friend of mine played me, he was showing off his new Bang & Olufsen turntable, and he oh, played, which nice. is, you know, if you had That's a Bang nice. & Olufsen turntable in the I'd 70s, be showing it off. you would be showing it off in a big way. Um, and he played me a Frank Zappa album, and Frank Zappa had a song about a floss farmer, which <laughs> I thought was like one of the funniest things I'd ever heard. It was kind of like bumping into Monty Python, you know. It was like, oh, how long have these guys been so funny? So this is a little ode, a little... This is an nod, homage. Homage. To Frank Zappa, who, who I do not believe has been homaged in a Christian kids video before. No, I think probably this is the first. not. We'll now, Dweezil, Dweezil, we homage oh, all yeah, the time. Oh yeah, Dweezil. I think the uh, Bible man was that was one big yep. Dweezil. And so. Moon Unit. What do you think of? They're, they're flossing here. Um, <laughs> that unit was uh, designed and developed by Brian Roberts. Yeah, that wasn't in my script. There was no, no floss testing there in wasn't, my script. So, in fact, there are lots of things here that weren't in my script, and I'm going to point them all out. <laughs> Every single one of them. Like that tractor. Will you, will you rank that, them? Yeah, that tractor. Old Bessie was no, not that, in the that, script. No, that wasn't in my script either. But boy, think how great it is to have an explosion in what, the show. And how did Paw Grape survive the explosion of a steam I didn't. Engine? It didn't really explode. It just kind of fell apart. It, it was that a steam In a gaseous manner. He's a, he's a tough old grape. Sure, it's a steam-powered tractor. Steam-powered. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> and they don't even well, make well, pots for her anymore. There goes the poster. Wait a minute, he had the poster. Yep, the and poster. It blew away. Designed it by Gretchen away. Heineke. I mean, Gretchen Heineke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. That's, Kurt, <laughs> that's Kurt's daughter. Kurt's, Kurt's uh, daughter, Gretchen. Daughter. She do Gretchen Stebolt. Oh, very talented that's designer different. here. Those on are, staff. They have the same first name, but they're not. You'll see you can see why I get later. confused. Yeah, it's a wonder you weren't. They look quite different. Commentaries. I forgot to watch it. <laughs> I love this Ooh, shot. Look at that. Ooh, see that barn right there? See that barn right there? Was that in yeah, your script? I see the barn. Yeah, there Michael was a barn Spooner. In my script. Michael Spooner did that barn. Michael Spooner. He why he's the historic uh, art director of Jonah. He is right. Part well, guy. part of Jonah. Uh, and yes. Joseph Pulich. That's Pulich. right. Sh Sh give props where props are due. Yes, I, yeah, I'm trying to give job. proper props, but this some of my fun. props are improper. <laughs> Uh oh, oh the rainbow. Uh, Chofil, I don't think you ever finished talking about Ship why Shimana. it took three years to make this show. Oh, so then, so, okay, so Lord of the Beans came out and everybody liked it, but uh, the owners of the underlying film rights, who we will not name, said, hey, did we give you permission to do that? I don't think we're legally allowed to name them. No, no, can't name anything or anyone. No In fact, I have to stop talking right now okay, and remain silent stopping. for the rest of the film. <laughs> That's not true. Okay, yeah, I'm going to take, a memo. I'm gonna take the legal risk here and continue. So that led to some interesting conversations, but also led to a, a raised awareness of legal liability in using other people's intellectual property it's, in your parodies. It is the gray area of parody. Is it is. Friend. Parody is a very... You can do it on Saturday Night Live without a problem because it's just a short little segment in a larger episode, which is what we were told. But when you do your entire show about another story, you're in a very gray area and it's... You know, and some people say it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. <laughs> we are no longer in that camp. No. 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 We're, we're now in the camp officially of... Permission. Ask permission. Right. And, and Rules so to live by kids. that led to like a year and a half of conversation before we could make this. So speaking of gray area, note the farm is very gray. I think it's beautifully done. That means something? It's very hard to do a colored CG feature, Brian, would you say? Without gray. color in it? Yeah, without with Well, color. yeah, I mean, it was tricky because clearly... Don't you clearly, just walk over to the TV well, and turn down you know, the crawl? Well, that's just it, is we didn't want to do that. Uh, you know, Wizard of Oz, when it begins, is in a sepia tone. Now I'm going to talk about that film a little bit here because many people believe that Wizard of Oz was filmed in black and white and that the color was later added. That is incorrect. I don't believe that. The film was shot, the, the, the farm sequences were shot on sepia tone film 
than the Oz sequences mm -hmm. were filmed in the three strip multicolor or technicolor process. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was not colored later. Mm -hmm. We wanted to create that feeling here that it's kind of, everything is kind of black and white and desaturated, but I didn't want to make it sepia tone because that just, you know, we're on this farm for like seven minutes and I think seven minutes of black and white. Right. There might be some children who could lose interest. What's that say on the back of his modern, shirt? Modern. Uh, on the back of his shirt it says, I went to the land of Haas and you didn't ha ha. Oh, that's You can nice. still frame it. I think Modern so. children do not have a tolerance for oh. sepia tone. No, they don't. They that's don't. Good. Not it's, anymore. It's scientifically proven. Yeah, once their iPods went to color screens, it was pretty much <laughs> it was all pretty over. It was for, all over for, for black sepia. and white and sepia tone. Yeah. You see, Junior has a little bit of his side mouth back. Side mouth? Yes. What do you sings, mean by that, Chris Well, Chris it's Wall? where our little friend Junior here sings a little bit out of the side of his mouth, like a kid does when they're kind of being sheepish. Some kids. Some kids do. All kids, Brian. Oh, there's one. And so his little mouth. You know, originally Archibald Look had, at those a, had a side mouth. Mm. I remember that. In the very, very early days, I designed him with a side mouth because he was British, and I thought that would kind of go with a. It's kind of gone away, hasn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. gone away because of the physical therapy. <laughs> you can Love now this shot. Look at that. Keep his Look mouth so straight. Pretty. Oh, that's nice. That is Lovely debris. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we that's couldn't. Debris. We couldn't afford to do shots like that in the old days. No, not in the old days. When Archie had his side mouth. <laughs> but you could afford more jokes, though. So we it can, kind of even yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> we can. Well, Back we then, can, the jokes were free. <laughs> we can nothing else. Now, now we have to pay for those. <laughs> now you have to pay for the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh, well, what's it going boy. right for a joke now, Phil? Oh, How are they paying you? <laughs> what day is it? Oh, hey. There's a tornado back there. That's pretty. We tried hard not to make the tornado too scary. Uh, yeah. If any of the children out there are afraid of the tornado, <laughs> the I apologize, apologize for that. Now, I my do. script, in my, my script, too. the tornado was not scary at all. So if you're scared of the tornado, <laughs> that's purely don't direction. send me an email. <laughs> My tornado so was my face, you know, you know, it's, it's not dead. Yeah, you know what I love about it, that in your script, you, you described the, the trailer as tornado bait. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Darby spies a trailer on a yeah. hill. Tornado, tornado bait. bait. <laughs> <laughs> well. So we tried to make it feel like. Okay, that's often pull outside the office. Michael Spooner designed that. And Michael Spooner did it immaculate job building that pole. <laughs> he, he got very detailed about how the wire he connects detailed, to the pole. The insulator really? he detailed. Yeah. He, he broke it. it was I amazing. hope you weren't paying him by the hour. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, I actually... <laughs> oh, there she goes. Mary Poppins, that was not in your script. Because if you're ever working with a perfectionist, you want to put them on a flat rate. Flat rate, yeah. <laughs> flat rate on the perfectionists. Ooh, that uh, like it hurt. The Mary Poppins, real quickly, oh, yeah. That was uh, the voice of that was uh, Julie Smith who is also the who voice was the actual of Mary Poppins. She was also <laughs> right? the voice of the mayor's daughter in Mo and the Big Andrews. Exit. It's a friend of mine. Andrews. Uh, we added that character okay. just because I, I was trying to gag up the show a little bit. And when Darby says, change in the winds earlier, I, it, for some reason it made me think of Mary Poppins, where whenever in, in Mary Poppins she has to leave when the winds change. So I thought, well, is that if right. that were true everywhere, that could be kind of funny. <laughs> so every right. time the winds change, Mary Poppins is flying in. And that's uh, so. It could be kind of funny. Whether it is funny, we'll let you decide. We'll let you decide. So, it's, but it's not actually Mary Poppins, though. It's just a but nanny who's dressed to look like Mary Poppins. Yeah. Because we don't want to get in legal trouble <laughs> with no. you know. But it's who. a smaller piece of a larger artistic exactly. work. Oh, look at so the big, big purple ball. Yeah, I it's, thought it would be funny because you know, in the movie, that she comes in in a bubble. That to have it come in, but since it's there are characters, they they don't have much for shape. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at and, them from the right angle, it right. just is a bubble. And so she is a big purple ball. So this is Munchyland. She flies around bottom first. Yeah, <laughs> Munchyland is very tasty. Ooh, sparkles. It's kind of like you know when you're re-entering Earth's atmosphere after a trip to the moon. You know, you always re-enter bottom first. Yes, yeah, <laughs> because right. that's where your heat shield. The heat is. shield, right. That's her heat shield. So we have the Munchy Muncher, which we don't really explain very much, but uh, it's dangerous. Holding? What is she holding? Is it a miniature? It's a flower. It looks a like flower. a miniature version of herself. No, it's, a <laughs> <laughs> it's just a flower. Oh. It's herself on a stick. Okay. She's, our, she's licensed herself. We didn't want her to have a wand. No, because that would imply magic. That implies magic, and and we try to be... We don't go there. <laughs> I love it. try to be delicate about how we deal with things like that. Um, the, the fact she's flying around, I actually thought about turning into a joke. <laughs> like showing the wires at some point or having her get tangled up in a set right. piece. Uh, it was really but budgetary reasons that kept that from happening. Phil, I love the way this sets light. up that she believes that he really is this great traveler, you know, and... and 
goes all the way to saying he's got a starship and all that. But where does she get that from? She's just making it up. She's really she's smart. Winging she's, she's winging it. She's winging it. Oh. Hey, and and oh, you know, we didn't we didn't say this. She's not really connected to reality, Blueberry, which is why she's not even on the Madame ground. Madame Blueberry is our, our good friend Jackie Ritz. Yes, who was the really third out job. of four Madame Blueberries in yep. the history of her voice? I she's think. Yeah, come and gone. Madame Blueberry is the most frequently revoiced character in the history of Western pop culture. <laughs> yeah. So she's now the third and fifth, I think. And they've all done yeah, excellent now, jobs. Yeah, uh, now, this is the first Dana Carvey and Robert De Niro reference in a VeggieTales video. Yes. As far as I'm That's aware. That's true. We, we actually had to we do... We write that. You wrote that. Although I did reference Dana Carvey in the character commentary for Jonah. Oh. Really? That's different. Or maybe That's I not didn't. in a show. I'm nobody watches sure. the commentaries so, anyway. No, nobody watches. Tell it. Us about Except for you. Whoever, whoever just heard me say that, you're the, you're one, the one person. We can say anything here, and there will be no consequence. So, is that true? T- that's not true, Phil. I don't oh, think that's true. true. Is that why I had that restraining order? Oh, the, here's... For if you uh, Okay, years. everyone, I want you to rewind there and listen to those munchies screaming again as they're running away. Why? So, go ahead and rewind, and then come back to me. Okay. All right, now Welcome that you're back, back um, when those munchies scream, you'll hear one little munchie going, oh, no, ah. That is Daniel Bradman. Yes, it is. It's Daniel Bradman. And Daniel Bradman, Daniel Bradman is a guy, a little, a little guy who came into our office one day uh, with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Oh, uh, yes. Through the Make-A-Wish Foundation, Daniel was able to make a wish, and his wish was to come see Big Idea. He could have wished for anything, you know, trips to Disney World or mountains of peanut butter. He wanted to come see Big Idea, so we got to host him one day here in the office. It was so wonderful. Uh, and while he was here, we took him into Kurt's office and recorded him as a munchie, as a French pea. That is so sweet. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, so we're excited to have him in there. He's actually in the credits. You'll see his name in there. He's a munchie. He was a great little, great little friend. So thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. Hope you like the show. So yeah. tell us about if the you don't toad. blame it on the director, please. Yellow, <laughs> that's me. Tell us about the toad. That was actually Mike's idea. I think in my very first draft, and this was back in the outline stage. So this is like in 1973. <laughs> uh, it was just the yellow brick road. I was just riffing on the yellow brick road, and Mike said, "Oh, let's do something weird with that. How about?" Uh, and he came up with it. I don't know if it was on the spot or later. He came, yellow Mick Toad. Uh, okay, well that's pretty weird. Sure. Let's, let's, and so we ended up with this it. Scottish frog, <laughs> yes, <laughs> running around in a kilt as a guide. Let the, a Scottish isn't that an old Scottish proverb? Let a Scottish frog be your guide. May the road rise to you. May the frog rise the to lead you. Frog of iniquity. May the toad blow at your back. Past the den of your. I think that's Irish. Mother. Or something. Okay. Oh, you know, goes. it's funny. We get some. We've had shown this show to a few people, and they go, "Well, why is Yellow McToad red?" <laughs> it's like, well, his skin is yellow. His right. kilt is red. <laughs> they can't tell the difference between clothes and and skin. Well, it's just his overwhelming appearance is red. Like it's it's the main color you see. Oh, I mm. see. Mm. But he just didn't. Well, look that good. sounds like a design problem. We Did tried they... a yellow. A yellow kilt, and that just didn't work. No, that, that wouldn't field. work at all. No one wants a you yellow kilt. Back there? Those oh, are those are nice. Who painted those? Joe Spadford. Oh, wow. Mr. Joe. Well, I hope this he, was initially... I hope he got a big fat this was raise. Oh, this field. Well, it was originally just in the script, which Mr. Vischer wrote. It, it was, was just, corn. just corn. Just corn. And I kind of said, as we were developing it, I said, you know, we've got this fantastic world that Darby lives in and where they grow floss on a farm, which I thought was really funny, and toilet paper on the neighbor's farm. And then we get to the fantasy world, and they're just growing corn. I'm like, it seems ha, like... get it? seems like the fantasy world should be even more Appar- fantastic. Apparently, he didn't get it. I didn't get it. So I thought the fantasy world should be even more fantastic than the floss. So I, at one point, we had it as toilet paper. But then we decided... I, beat, I said, no, yeah. I don't <laughs> like that. Now they're the same. Yeah. Now the inte- both worlds are supplying bathroom products. Yeah. 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 Doesn't make so in keeping with the right. theme of Munchie Land, we made it some munchies. Now, yeah. one thing that we Candy differ corn. in the book, because the, the, the movie says that this was all a dream. Yes. In and the book, it really the happened. The movie says this was a dream. The book says it really happened. So the question is, what do you believe? About no, our movie or the about question. their movie? About ours. <laughs> I either, I don't know. I was trying to be vague. Yeah, yeah. Phil was trying to be vague. I, I was trying to be a little more deliberate uh, in the way that I approached it. 
to me it was important that Darby really did kind of go off and do these things. So that's why we never see him like get bumped on the head and pass out. And you know, we do have that little blackout when he lands in Munchie Land. I love that. <laughs> that's funny. It's my belief that Pratt Falls should happen regularly. Yeah, almost we need a metronome that that just takes yes. like five minutes to click back and forth. That would be a really big metronome. And a click. A click. <laughs> Five minutes later. You'd be making the pit and the pain. Ready? Here comes another one. <laughs> click. Oh, there's one. <laughs> Somebody fall down quick. quick. So to me, it was important that we that we we could be vague, but not to be mis. Okay. I didn't want you to be able to think Joke. that it never really happened. Joke coming up. Yeah. Joke coming up that someone's gonna have to explain. I'm not gonna. Ready? Explain. Here goes. What joke? This one. Either you get it or you don't. If you get it. Good for you. Good for you. It's a B-52's reference, okay? Yes, it is. No, oh, let it out the bag there. <laughs> My this is probably one of the funniest things. I, when I read the script, I howled, Phil. This routine. On boil spam. About spam. Boil <laughs> Have you considered spam. a career in fellow marketing? <laughs> boil spam. That makes sense. Oh. Or oil can. Oil can. Sure. Yeah. But when, when lunch is in the scene, writing just becomes easier. <laughs> I don't, it's like, you know, it's like if you know you've got Robin Williams that's going to come in to do a character, you know you're going to get stuff that's better than you could write. When you're writing a scene, do you ever just go, and then I'll say something funny? And it, well, <laughs> but it was, it was all written out. But yes, it was. It was, it was just yeah. that when Lunt walks into the room, even, you know, metaphorically, his lines are funnier. So yeah. it's like Robin Williams writing for himself, but he still has to write the script and ahead of time. It's very hard to explain. I have a little lunch-shaped person inside of me, <laughs> and when he's allowed to speak, it's easy. Things happen. <laughs> it's funny. Funny happens. Yeah, and I have a little bob-shaped person inside of me, and when so he speaks, it's not as funny. So here's these guys. They're looking, they're looking very Oz-like with the burlap and the... Silver. Oh, did you pick up on that? <laughs> I like it. Well, it's, that was another thing. As I we think were, it was intentional, right, Brian? We, you well, were trying to say something. I think. Well, here's a little more history. This show has been put into production four different times. Uh, twice at the beginning, Tim Hodge was directing it. And then the next two times, I was directing it. Uh, one of those times, it was like for two days it was in production. Uh, they didn't get very far. No, we didn't get very far in two time. days. Uh, anyway, so a lot of the concept work uh, goes back to... Uh, we'll pick up that conversation later. We want to talk about the <laughs> silly song Hold that now. thought. How'd this silly song start? Woohoo! So funny. Well, we needed a silly song. Yeah, that's how they all start. Yeah. <laughs> and as we know, Mr. Mike Naraki had, at the same time we were making this, been working on a feature film. Right. He was... A little film called The Pirates called Who Don't Do Anything, he was, a VeggieTales uh, movie. locked up in a booth somewhere, a tiny closet in Toronto. So <laughs> we, I had gotten a CD from uh, Kurt Heineke of uh, Andrew Peterson and Randall Goodgame, who were... Have, it, Kurt's played with them for a bit, okay. and they gave a little CD. Of, played it, soccer with them. Uh, so Andrew does a Christmas concert a Christmas every thing. every Christmas yes. here Andrew in Nashville. Peter, Andrew Peterson is a uh, Christian artist, bit singer, of, bit of a singer, and, and it's so, really good. And Go writer. check out his stuff. So they uh, I like him a lot. I think it's Andy they Peterson. Did little, they did this little. They did this little. Google it. This kid CD that was just Can I say really Google? fun. So my kids were having a blast enjoying the CD, and I brought it in and said, "Man, these guys are so funny. I think we have something here." Uh -huh. And so then, uh -huh. we called him. No, just like well, that. Kurt knew him. You called him? Two phone calls. See, so that's, where, that's where I would have failed. Yeah. would have broken so down right there. We said, hey, would you guys be interested in doing these songs? We brought him in for lunch, and we told him how smart they are. And, you know, business relationships always go really well when you start by telling people how smart yeah. and clever they and are. And when you shake hands with them at the end of lunch, and there's like a wad of bills in your hand. We didn't do that. You didn't do that? I don't have wads of bills. If I did, really? I would keep them for myself. Okay. That's another company. So, um, yeah, so they came in and pitched this on guitar, just sat in the office and said, hey, we got this little song. And I, think I was literally crying. Brian hurt himself that day. I literally it was cried. So there were tears on my face. Fell down. It was so, yeah, so funny. funny. He hit you with his guitar. He did, well, there was nothing. <laughs> oh, tears of joy. So, anyways. Uh, so the pitch was great, and then we, we turned it into a song. And Andrew said, we said, Andrew, how did you think of this song? It's so funny. He said, I was at the zoo. And the lady at the zoo said, A kid asked, a kid yeah. asked, well, how, how do you know you if it's a monkey? And, and she, she said, said, if it doesn't have a tail, it's not a monkey. Not a monkey. And, and Andrew oh. thought, huh, That's a funny little rhyme. Huh, that's a funny little rhyme. And if you took that concept too far, <laughs> yeah. it could get out of hand really quickly. 
like it did here. Like, like here. it did here, because Larry, Larry got his hands on that concept and took right. it too far. And, and, and he would do that. He meant good by This it. little part where Bob has a tail, it doesn't actually make sense. Like, yeah, where who, did the tail come from? Put the tail on the, him. I kind of think of it that metaphorically, Larry made a monkey out of Bob. The, uh, that really, Larry. I think it kind comes of, from Bob not not checking his medications in any, <laughs> any cross. Or maybe he played at Pleasure Island. Hey, so this forest, to do that this forest seems vaguely familiar. But it's not. Ryan Roberts. No. Hmm. Familiar to what? The trees, Lord of the Beans. The trees oh. we reused from Lord of the Beans. Everything else is new. Oh, my goodness. Uh, because that, huh? do the trees make weird noises? They're a different color. You know, we, we talked about using the forest just straight from Lord of the Beans, but yeah. I felt really strongly that we needed a completely different feeling. Okay. I wanted a much simpler, cleaner... Um, yeah. Well, more, trees in our story that go are not going to make any sense whatsoever. Well, but even just the forest they walk it through. It is a nicely beans. cleaned up forest. I just wanted it to be clean and simple and lovely. Uh, and Mr. Spatterford uh, redesigned the forest and we made a new one. Now, you were talking about concept before we went to the break. Okay, so the characters, uh, a lot of the concept was created when Tim Hodge was directing the show um, on the first two passes. And so I inherited a lot of that work when I took over. Um, one of the things they had done, though, is they had taken Larry, Lunt, and Pa and dressed them up as these characters. So it was it was Lunt in a scarecrow costume. Yes, I it remember that. It was a green that. Larry in a Tin Man costume. I remember not liking and when, it very and when, much. And when I took over, you know, we showed the concept to Phil, and he said, okay, I have a problem. And what was your problem, Phil? I didn't like it. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> More specifically... <laughs> What did I say? I don't well, remember. Well, you said, okay, they can't, he can't, Lunt specifically, you said, he can't be just Lunt dressed up as oh, a scarecrow. Oh, right. Because then, because we're going to unstuff him. When he gets unstuffed, it becomes ghastly and weird. Oh, yeah. We're going to so, unstuff him, and that's going to be hideous. So we said, we, he needs to be, it's not Lunt dressed up as a scarecrow. I'm assuming it's, you've already watched the show, so I'm not giving away <laughs> any spoilers when I say we're going to unstuff him. So it's Lunt as a scarecrow, not Lunt dressed up as a scarecrow. And it, and right. it changed our concept a little bit. We yeah. kind of revisited. Pa stayed the same, but Larry and Lunt both changed okay. to become more well, who was, they are. Was Pa, Pa wasn't green? In the, in the first design? <laughs> no, he wasn't. Pa, has, no. pa always had a lion outfit. He was always. Oh, so, is, which is, it's really... That's kind of weird. It's, it's really weird like, to me, even now looking at Pa as the lion. Like, yeah. he's fully Pa, yeah. and yet he's fully lion. Here it comes. Funniest yeah. joke. Ready? But they won't let me eat them. Children film. I don't think that's uh, that films. funny. <laughs> <laughs> Kills me. <laughs> I love that. Oh, even. the director doesn't think that's funny. If you think oh that joke gosh. is funny, send an email send to Brian email. Roberts, <laughs> bigidea.com. No, that's not it. Tell him he's full of hooey. That's what? my old address. Um, but, I changed but, my address because I got too much spam. Well, don't oh, see? Give that that's you spam. sent him too many hey, emails. There's our meter, Prattfall. You can call oh, the front yeah. desk, and the lady at the front desk the will tell you. The frog fell down. Prattfall, five minutes. That wasn't in the script. No. That wasn't in the script. It the wasn't. script never said the frog falls down. It's a toad, anyways. So, so it wouldn't have said that. It looks like a frog. Does it have lumps? Ooh. I don't see any lumps. Oh, look the at the land, land of Oz. Michael Spooner painted that. Beautiful painting. It's beautiful. <laughs> I think I designed the location. I designed the layout. Anyway, well, I wrote it's a field nobody, of flowers. Nobody cares. It's a field of flowers, but it's, it's a not field of, really. It's deceptive. Sometimes what we're trying to teach kids here is sometimes looks can be deceiving, and you should always look before you they step. They can. Yes. And this sequence didn't come out quite how you had it in your head, Phil. I know it didn't. Well, I don't think so, did it? Because you were kind of thinking we would be a little more obscure about how we revealed the puppies oh, and things. Yeah, and I was. Because the idea was that it was really a field of all puppies. Yes. And I kind of took it and said, okay, we can't have a field of you know hundreds of puppies. Why not? Because just the budget won't allow for that. Oh, come so on. So I kind of changed it to where it was a field of flowers with some puppy flowers. Never in it. let the budget interfere with art. Uh, uh, yeah, tell that to Chris. <laughs> it's not going to work out so much. Can we animate right. 340 puppies, please? So this little, oh. this is some really fun choir here. It is. So we'll talk about the music finally. Uh, even though it's a musical, we haven't talked about it yet. Where'd the music come from? Uh, well, of course, Phil, you wrote the songs. You wrote oh, the lyrics yeah. and most of the, most of the melodies, with Kurt helping out a little on some of the melodies. Yeah. Uh, but yep. then, so we have the songs, but then we needed them to be produced, and then we needed all the score written. And uh, just like Mr. Naraki was tied up in Toronto on the pirate movie. Literally Kurt, tied up. <laughs> Kurt, in a closet. <laughs> Kurt uh, Heineke has been writing the... Handcuffed. Uh, ...the score for the pirate film. 
uh, during production here on Wizard of Haas. So we needed uh, another guy to come in and help Kurt uh, get the music done for this show. And we got a recommendation from our, uh, from our recording engineer, Fred Paragano, who said, hey, you know Hoodwinked, that movie? The guy who did the music for that lives here in town. Who knew? Who knew? I didn't know. Hey, I didn't know that. And I said, hmm, hoodwinked. I think the music was good in that. So I went and listened, got the movie and watched it. And yeah, the music was really good. By golly, it was good. It was good. It had a lot of original songs that were really well produced. Uh, And so we gave Mr. John Mark Painter a call. And it turns out that uh, he was available. So he did this for us. And his lovely wife, Fleming, who is one half of Fleming and John, a fantastic uh, group. Which a, half? A, a, uh, the Fleming, <laughs> the Fleming half. Oh, okay. And then John Mark Painter is the John half. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, we well, should never assume. He, sure. Should. I mean, you know, because it could be something totally. Yeah. Different. So uh, John was able to draft his wife uh, into helping us out with some of the choral work. It's actually sad oh, is, for me is he because the other half of Fleming and John. He is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So they Just are. To they it. are together. Fleming and John. Together. The totality. Of but they're Fleming married. And John. So what's sad for me, though, is it's, I, it's been, a, you know, whenever there's a choir for the last several years, Kurt and I have been the choir. Yeah. With the occasional addition of Mike That's been kind of or... sad for me, too. <laughs> so on this show, a choir I'm here. kidding. You are the best two-man choir I ever heard. <laughs> on this show, I had to step back from that and let John take care of the choir stuff. Uh, so it's been it's been kind of sad for me because I love the music. I love this song. Can I just say? Thank Great song, you. Phil. You know, so. we did change. Originally, the song was just three times through the choir singing it. And it, in the story development process, I think I said, hey, how about if the characters sing parts of this? Yep, and you said that. I said that, and it works, I think. It does, but yeah. then we I had to okay, stay that mushroom. the even okay. longer. Rewind back to that mushroom. That's okay. a joke that never paid off. Uh, at the theme park that I grew up at, basically, we always had season passes there. Uh, in Virginia, there were these singing barbershop mushrooms that I used to love. Really? And when I was designing this park for the show, I said, okay, I want to get a singing barbershop mushroom in there as a tribute to my childhood theme park. Are we going to get sued for that? No, we couldn't possibly. All right. Uh, Famous last words. So anyway, that mushroom there was supposed to be singing along. But, uh, you know, a production is a sequence of compromises. It is. And disappointments. And that's one of my compromises and disappointments is that that mushroom never sang. Never came to life. So now he just sits there doing nothing. Is a mushroom a vegetable, by the way? It's a fungi. A mushroom is a fungus. I don't think it counts as either. We've had mushroom characters in the show before, back on uh, Larry Boy and the Rumor. Yeah, we did. There were some background characters. Look at another part of the park. Wow. Oh, oh, we just got a glimmer. Oh, I want to go there. What's the big yellow thing? Hey, talk to talk to us about the posters on the wall in here. Oh, Oh, those are from Dollywood. Mr. Paul Conrad and I think some of his other brilliant designers over there on our design staff. Design those for Dollywood for a ride we have there. Get out. And then when we needed set dressing for a theme park, we said, Huh, you guys got anything lying around? They wow. said, How about these posters? Are we going to get sued for that? I think we <laughs> are no. not. There's no more suits. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> we never get sued anymore. Ever. I'm a little nervous. A little jumpy. A little jumpy. <laughs> A bunch all. of suits come so bursting the, through the door. Hey, Phil, the wizard. I remember in the original script you had that as uh, Jimmy Gord. It was going to be Jimmy Gord for a while. I thought he could be kind of fun, but uh, Archibald was always an option. Yeah, so you said Archie was an option. I said, I, I think Archie would be better as this flamboyant kind of prancing, prancing wizard. Pony. <laughs> Pony, prancing wizard guy. <laughs> uh, and, I, and what's funny is when I showed the, the film to Mike Naraki after it was animated... It wasn't until the wizard takes his mask off here in a minute that Mike went, oh, was that Archie? Uh-huh. <laughs> and I'm like, well, yeah, hey. who'd you think it was? He, well, I thought it might have been Scallion 1. He got into the character <laughs> so thoroughly that we kind of lost Ooh. him. But he always Flashback. has the monocle. Flashback. We lost Flashback. him. Flashback. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. Have we done flashbacks before? I think we, Veggie hmm. Tales? This might be uh, breaking new ground. We had the yeah. little Joe... Summary on Mo and the Big Exit, mm-hmm. where we reused footage from oh, a different right. show right. in the show, and that worked well. I mm-hmm. thought so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe a little long. So hopefully this will work too. I think so. So here is a big turn. This is this is the big story turn. Darby realizes all the pleasures in the world cost something, and we all realize that at some point. Mm-hmm. Just not when we're five, like Darby. No, so he's gonna be he's, he's gonna, gonna be ahead a, of the game when he's have a teenager. A good life. <laughs> He's going to have a good life. He'll be doing uh, PSAs and 
you know, public service announcements at his high school about the evils. About of the evils of all remember, sorts of things. I remember in the development process, Phil, you and I had a conversation where I kind of said, so I'm, I don't really get, like, why is the park a bad place? Because Darby pays his money and gets to ride stuff. So yeah. what's the problem? And, and it wasn't to say that a theme park is a bad place. It thank was, goodness. Yes, thank goodness, because we all love them. So it was really to say that the pursuit of happiness through pleasure through fun the pursuit of earthly pleasure trying to find you know what you're really looking for which is peace and joy through pleasure and this sort of pleasure uh, is bankrupt it it doesn't get you where you want to be and you said to me it's you said i think your specific sentence was the pursuit of earthly pleasure leads to death Wow, yeah, that's pretty. That uh, sounds quotable. That's pretty serious. Look at this. Pl- wow, what a trash heap. Yeah, that's a mess. This man. location has changed so many times. Yeah, I don't even remember what I originally wrote. It was originally a dungeon with a <laughs> staircase. Because originally this guy, uh, Strange Boy slash uh, Chester slash Bobby Bernard <laughs> slash Gordon Gordon uh, the bully from Bully Trouble, <laughs> he originally imprisoned Darby. He's not Bobby Bernard. He's Bobby Bernard's cousin. Oh, okay. That's what we decided. <coughs> That's what we decided. They look so close. <laughs> I don't remember the meeting. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah okay. Must, I'll check my I guess, email. I think that was before the restraining order expired. <laughs> right. So anyway, that kid originally imprisoned Darby. And then that was one of the things through the development process where we went. That's It just was feeling complicated and... and uh, we had this, but there was this great chase sequence that we ended up losing when we changed that. Lisa, yeah, which is too bad. Lisa did a, such yeah. a great job. Let's talk about Lisa. Let's talk about my wife. Brian got into the booth with this one and just said, "This has got to be the best junior story. That just let's just run with it and have and have a grand time with memorable lines." And man. This thing is loaded. Yeah. Some yeah. people have been saying that things have been a little Larry heavy lately. So this is Junior's chance to yeah. shine, get some screen time, and hopefully, you know, a little fan mail. Hopefully. Hopefully. Nobody's reading his blog. You know, he wants to. I think it's funny that <laughs> nobody ever questions whether or not Tutu's a dog or a pig. And, Tutu, and Darby never even introduced Tutu as his dog to anybody, and yet Pa still says, you got your dog to thank for that. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it, do you know why? Why? Because I thought it was funny. <laughs> it was funny. That's the explanation That's for the explanation. about 99% of VeggieTales. All right, now we're going to do something we've not done in a VeggieTales before. We're going to... Unstuff a character. Unstuff a character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for just, obvious we, we try to avoid it because the seeds just get everywhere. It's a mess. Yeah. And it frightens the children. Uh, He's skinny. That's so funny. Uh, wow. Yeah, this is one of those things when you read a script, you kind of go, I don't know how that's uh, going to work. <laughs> oh, where there's a will, there there's goes. a way. And we Just made it door, work. Latches open. And brilliant technicians and artists. Wow. Off he goes. Where is he? Oh. Uh, there he is. We had to give him a false nose there because his normal nose was not showing up. So. <laughs> There's actually an extra nose. What? That we, oh, there's an extra yeah. nose caught between the bars there that Whoa. we've made bigger. Did someone leave that one behind on a prior <laughs> breakout attempt? Whoa. Must have. There they go. Yay. That's kind of fun. Don't try that at home, kids. Oh. Never know what's in straw. I learned that. I learned that on the farm. Did you know I grew up on a farm? No. Tell us about yes. your childhood on the farm. Sixty acres of farm that I grew up on with horses and goats and all that wow, stuff. That's and you're awesome. not supposed to ever jump into hay because you there could be a fork in there let's say yeah or some other implement or a needle could do bad things for you could or be a needle a horse poop yeah that's another yeah that'll mess up your not hay so much deadly as inconvenient yeah and embarrassing so i don't know what the minions were doing there hanging out because they don't really belong at the park this is where Phil's original script was much cleaner in the whole <laughs> chase escape thing. It got a little That's muddy. okay. That's okay. When we do the writer's cut of the yeah, film. The writer's <laughs> cut, why are there never see. writer cuts? Yeah, because writers aren't allowed to touch the film. <laughs> oh, writers that's cuts. right. That's you funny. may not touch the film. Oh, here he comes. Bobby Bernard. Oh. So we build it up to this great. Oh, we're dead gag. now. Oh, oh no! Well, you had to do this. You just had to do this. It was too obvious, and I yeah. apologize. 
Low, did. low hanging but, fruit, Phil. Yes, very low <laughs> hanging fruit. <laughs> We actually cut a lot of this guy's dialogue. That it, it's a long story. Anyway, he had a lot of dialogue both in this scene and the previous scene. And here's we Julie, just, we Julie cut Smith like half again. of it. My friend Julie Smith doing another great job. Casting uh, for yeah, Gordon's funny. mom was pretty easy, be, or figuring out what her voice should be, because when we when I originally came up with the voice for Gordon on Minnesota Cuke, we tried pitch shifting it like we do all our other characters, and when we did. It just sounded like Edith Bunker. Just just like Julie right now. <laughs> so when on this show it came time to cast Gordon's mom, I said, okay, we just need Edith Bunker. <laughs> so bring in some actresses and let's hear their Edith Bunker. And if you pitch shift her voice down, it sounds just like just Gordon. Like, I Gordon. believe that's true. It's odd. Right. That's very He's odd. made up Julie Smith. That's actually or, Brian. No, or, it's not. She's not a real person. She's a real person. She's very real. Or does she turn into Archie Bunker when you pitch shift her down? No. <laughs> <laughs> real. No. As long as she doesn't yeah. turn into oh, meathead. Oh, poor Darby doesn't know how to go home. Oh, I don't. Oh. I can't go home. It's a tinkly Splenda. Mm. Reentry. Oh, here comes the the very bottom. Very bottom. <laughs> very bottom. <laughs> very bottom. <laughs> that's a technical <laughs> term. I think that's a repeatable Heat phrase. Heat shield. We're gonna get a rating change. Heat shield. Heat shield. So this is one of the things that starts to bridge the fantasy world and the real world concept because. This that's about to occur is very real world. Yeah, and this is the sort of thing that if you spend too much time thinking about it, you'll just go crazy. Don't right. do it. So, you know. Oh, bye bye. One yeah. world, two world, I don't know. The line where she I says two, 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 uh, two, 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 that was funny. Yeah, I added that. We had to change the pig's name, and when we were coming up uh, from the name that you'd originally called it. Yes. When we can't talk about why or we'll get sued. Okay, moving on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I had to change the name of the pig. I'm really good at worrying lawyers, <laughs> just so you know. Uh, we had to change the name of the pig, and I'm trying to think of names, and I was like, well, I want to... If I named him Tutu, then I could have a line where Darby said two two two, and Splenda could say two two two. So now, how the trailer lands, you know, that's, not important that's off screen, but yeah. that's yeah. probably. <laughs> I actually run. thought well, about old, I thought about adding a sound effect off screen of this big crash and the dad <laughs> reacts to. Yeah, <laughs> the air. But it would have ruined the moment. They, they had really good shocks. Yes, <laughs> did they? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I didn't. You know could that. drop an airstream. Now look from, at this farm. Yeah. This shot right here. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. 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 This shot. Yeah. The first time I saw this shot in animation, it made me cry. Oh. Just seeing the dad running towards Darby with that reckless abandon and yeah. like the that the utter joy in the father mm -hmm. just being manifested physically in the way that he's running towards his son. That's the payoff. And that, I actually, I mean, when I read this script, Phil, this is I, I read it with my wife and I and I got I got all teary eyed at this part. You know, was, I've got my little ones at home and sissy. Yeah. That when you get your kids running up to you like that. Oh, my God. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the the uh, prodigal son is a pretty elemental story. It is, and that's one of the things we struggle with in development, where we we placed this Wizard of Oz framework on top of the prodigal son story, but it felt like there were a lot of places where the Wizard of Oz stuff was interfering with the prodigal son stuff. Yeah. So we paired a lot of the Wizard of Oz away to try to get to the nugget of the prodigal son and that kind of arc of cool all that where'd the song come fun. from that's andrew and randy andrew and randy that's right they, this was this is a song from their album from oh. slugs and, oh. and lullabies now this, what do you know this is look the... at tutu bouncing on the castle that was a late edition uh, suggested by tim hodge I see it. that we randy. were able to throw in there i love those sheets oh, look at him slow -mo. Oh. <laughs> Slow-mo's hard in CG. I yeah. hope it looks like slow-mo and not just bad animation. <laughs> you lose perspective sometimes. They were tired. Their, their jumps were slow. <laughs> they were jumping on the moon. Beautiful farm. Beautiful everything. Mm. Beautiful. Larry so it. at one point I wanted to have them like crying and sobbing here when we came back to him, and then I remembered that we did that on we Madame that. Blueberry. Yeah. Hold me, Bob. <laughs> yeah. I would if I could, man. Yes. I love this, Phil, the energy of him. He's so excited he wants to Here's the joke again. that doesn't work. It works. <laughs> Does it work? You if you don't this. understand what's happening, what's he got Bob on his doesn't. Head? Bob doesn't want to listen to the song, so he pulls out a pair of headphones at the last minute, so that the song will be muffled, so he doesn't oh. have to listen to it. Which are is they, why he's happy. Are they Bose noise canceling? That's I don't the know. Ideas. That's the idea. But it, originally, I had Brian him sticking cotton balls on his in his ears, and but he doesn't have ears. And I told yes. him that would not work. And, and it I did tried not it work. anyway, and it didn't work. So then we changed it to headphones, and it still. It I think. It 
I hope it plays. If if it now does play, then explained. if it does play, then call me and let me know that you understood the yes. joke. What's your cell phone number? Well, you can call, look <laughs> up five, the big five. idea number and ask for Brian Roberts and leave me a voicemail that says you understood. This okay. um, uh, Larry's interaction. I'm not kidding. Precious to me. If one person gets that joke, it's worth it. <laughs> What's precious, Chris? I'm sorry. Uh, just Larry's interaction here. Yeah, he's, he's so all busted. Sweet. What's, what's his dad to know? Good old QWERTY. We, <laughs> it's a funny little thing. The animators had been using the exact same QWERTY animation for like the last six shows. <laughs> so this time, Chris and I said, could we maybe mix it up a little bit? And it was the hardest shot to get right. <laughs> yeah, they, they kept coming back. We're like, no. Like most mm -hmm. shots, you maybe do one pass at it. Uh -huh. It's good. You move on. That shot, we like took three or four whacks at it till. We got wow. it to where we to where it is now. I love that verse, Phil. It's a good one. We uh, we not argued, but we discussed that because I was kind of like, well, that, wait, that does, verse isn't exactly what we're saying, but the way you explained it, yes, it's the and it's how the essence of what it? we're saying. Well, I think you said that uh, it's kind of it's the essence of what we're saying. It's the subtext of what we're saying, not the not right. the super right. text or whatever. Yeah, what he said is what I said. And it made oh. sense at the time. And I prodigal said it. actually means extravagant. So the whole having the lavish, the Whoa. love the father has lavished. I on didn't us, know that. It does. That all. Mm -hmm. That's one of the meanings well, of the word. I would have so made it's a, the story different if I knew that. It's a great verse. And he's got a chameleon. Because it's related to prodigious. Prodigal. Chameleon prodigious. is no prodigious. Prodigal. Okay. That was a great show. Uh, here we have a little bonus clip here at the end. Um, is that what this is? It's a bonus clip. So they didn't have to pay extra for no, no, no extra Because it's in the involved. credits, you see. Awesome. You don't pay extra for the credits. It doesn't stuff. count. It's free. And we didn't have to pay the animators either, right? <laughs> oh. And this is a stroke of genius from Mr. Phil Bisher. What? It wasn't my idea. No, oh, I think it was. The actually. performance was. Oh, oh have, it was. To have, have lunch, lunch singing it. it. Yeah. Well, here's the idea. thing. Yeah. We kind of felt like, okay, we're doing Wizard of Oz. You know, we're doing a, we're <laughs> doing a fully legal version. We can kind of do whatever we want here. We were feeling like what we really need was somewhere over the rainbow. So how That's can we put said. that in the show? What so can we do with it? they called me up and said, hey, do you want to rewrite Somewhere Over the Rainbow, you know, to make it work for VeggieTales? And I said, no. <laughs> no, I don't want to go down in history as the one who attempted a lame rewrite of Over the Rainbow. However, you said. However, if you want to have fun with it, have Mr. Lutz sing it. And that'd be Straight, hilarious. like he's Judy Garland. Um, these, and um, then we added some pratfalls because the metronome was swinging over to that side. Judy yes. Garland is the, a um, male scarecrow. See these blue birds? Brian animated those birds. Yes, I did. Wow. By hand. Mm -hmm. The old-fashioned way? The old -fashioned it was 2D way. animation. Oh, my goodness. So if I stand next to my uh, TV, they'll be flat. I won't even be able to see them. Exactly. <laughs> wow. No point wearing oh, glasses on those. He's back on the post. Back so, on the post. So there you go. Is, Thanks, is he Phil. happy at the end or is he sad? No. He's melancholy. Hold on. Let's see what he says. Tell my mom I'll be right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> you recorded another line that there that we would have used, except that you laughed in the middle of it. You said, tell my mom I'll be right here. And then you said, <laughs> I, I'm hungry. <laughs> but you laughed through the line, so we couldn't use it. I'm sorry. Well, great show, everyone. Great Thank show. You so much. Thank great you, Phil, for writing us such a meaningful yes, script. A good one. Glad I could help. See Welcome in, back to uh, commentary. See you in three more years. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. No, because we got Huck to do next. Hey, Huck. thanks, everyone, for uh, listening to our track and watching this great show. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you.